Welcome to Beyond the Lands. I'm here at Wine Connection in Sukhumvitsoi 47, and I'll be talking to Irish-American writer Hugh Gallagher about his recent books and his time as a writer with the Rolling Stone and Wired magazine. Let's go talk to Hugh. Hi, Hugh. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Right on. Yeah. Um, how did you get started as a writer? I remember uh, I was I was just a child, Keith. Mm -hmm. It was a very cold winter night. I remember it was a clear sky and there was one star way high up in the sky. And it just it said to me, uh, write, write. And ever since that star told me that, I've been writing. Wow, that's very, very interesting. Fast forward, Pat Pong, yeah. specifically, and Cosmos. Yeah. Talk about stars. Yeah. Now, that venue is a star in itself. It is. I had no idea. And you ended up there. Yes. I had no idea. <laughs> See, that's the best thing about Bangkok is yeah. there's really no preconception of the city and yeah. from where I come from. Yeah. So I was just discovering the city, and I happened to wander into this place called the Cosmos, yeah. which is weird because it ties into that star, and it eventually ties yeah. into the Yo Ching, which is the book that started there. Yeah. And I met a cat there, this guy named True Player. Yeah. Now, True Player is from the Bronx, and I spent most of my life in New York City. Mm -hmm. And I was a little bit lost when I came to Bangkok. You can, if you look back to when you first landed here, it can be yeah. a little bit overwhelming. So I was in the Cosmos Club, I was having a sang some soda and this really beautiful woman knocked over my drink mm. and it happened to be his date. Yeah. And he was like, oh, well, hey man, he's this big black guy from the Bronx. He's like, hey, what's up brother, let me buy you a drink. So it's like, all right, cool. So he starts talking to me, where are you from? And I was like, well, you know, I lived in New York. He's like, no, really? Where from? And then we started yeah. talking to the Bronx because yeah. I live in the Bronx a little bit. And after that, it was done. I had like my first friend in Bangkok. Yeah. True player is a genius. So this is his name? Well, this that's his nickname. Yeah, call me nickname. true, call me true. So, and he calls me Hughes. He's not like, yeah, hey yeah. Hughes, he's like, yo Hughes, what's up, Hughes? Let me tell you about what it's like to live in Asia. So mm -hmm. he's doing all this for me. Yo Hughes, I know you get to Bangkok, it's all different here. Let me tell you what's up, let me help, tell you how it flows, but let me tell you Bronx style. Uh, that is some Bangkok story <laughs> at the Cosmos. So, Yo Ching technically could be the second oldest book in the world. I Ching being the first. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Uh, it's based on the I Ching, mm -hmm. and the I Ching is an ancient philosophical Chinese book. Yeah. And it's the uh, second oldest book in the world, and it goes back 3,000, maybe 5,000 years. Mm -hmm. It contains all this information about how to harmonize with reality, how to blend with time and understand the way time moves through life. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you're trying to do something, you've got to make sure you're on the wave of how things are happening. Mm -hmm. Things happen in waves in life. I think you, I mean, you're a musician, so you understand this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, you like when you're jamming and you sort of like feel when it's time to, oh, this is where I, I should push forward oh, yeah, in the jam. Yeah, the pocket. Was, yeah, 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 the pocket. And life yeah. has pockets like that too. Life has times when you should really kick in. Life has times when you should lay back. Mm -hmm. So what the Yo Ching does is it gives you the tools to understand how time is moving. Mm -hmm. Oh, now it's time to pop off. Yeah. Now it's time to pull back. This is how to harmonize with this particular scene. And the book is beautiful that way. It really teaches you how to navigate reality, and it's been doing that for about 5,000 years. Yeah. The advantage is the Yo Ching talks in a way that people today can understand. Let's talk about controversy and uh, some other scary elements of, of, of writing, but um, lizard people, lifted, I mean. Yeah, uh, my latest book. How did this happen? My latest book is called Lifted, mm -hmm. and it is, uh, it's fiction, but what happened was there is an entire tribe on the internet, Keith. I'll tell this, I, some people know, but there are millions of people who actually believe that lizard people from another dimension rule our world. I started to get into it as a journalist. I was like, this is a funny story. I'm going to check this out. They're all, they, they go to conventions, they do all this stuff, and I kind of got pulled into it. And the further I got into it, it just got weirder and weirder. And a lot of people started telling me, like, uh, I don't think you should write this story. I don't think you should get into this. I don't think you should talk about the lizard people. And I mean, me being Irish, I'm like, what are you, <laughs> come on, you're gonna tell me what to do? And so I got into this world of lizard people and things started to get strange. Yep. And uh, so, I mean, well, I had people that were interested in the book and they'd be like, this is a great book, I love this, call me tomorrow, this is awesome, we're going to top the charts with it. 
And then they, the next day, they wouldn't be available and their assistant would call and just be like, oh yeah, he's no longer interested in the book. And I was like, all right, this happens in this business, but it happened a few too many times. And then I started to get some warnings, like more, don't- More than coincidence, actually. That's what it was like. And I got some warnings, like, hey, don't, don't write about this. Like I had, a, I had an agent who told me, he tried to be like, oh, let's sell this idea, let's sell this idea. And one day he was just like, just don't, don't do this. And so- For career-wise or they don't, the people involved, the lizard people I, I don't or know. its followers? Is it- I don't know, I don't know. How many followers? Is it? These people, there's millions of people that believe that. There's gonna be some people watching that, they're gonna say, oh, Hugh Gallagher's a lizard person <laughs> because he's writing about it. It's out there, it's out there. So what I did was, I was like, you know what, I'll write about this as fiction, fantasy. It's kind of fun, because what it does is it ties into the idea of darkness in our world, and evil, and evil's out there. So Yo Ching had to be written. Yeah, yeah, Just absolutely. To find the answer. This is the book that so pulled me out of that. So you can ask the answer, yeah. if you should write, lift it. Oh yeah, it was 100% for it. Thank you so much for being on the show. But before you go. A real pleasure. Let's ask the Yo Ching a question. In fact, what advice would you have for new writers? Uh, I asked, you know, we were talking about that beforehand. The way you ask the Yo Ching, there's an app for it. There's coins you gotta throw. I already did that part of it. And what the Yo Ching brought me to, well, I can't say the name of the rexagram because it, contains a curse word, There's a lot of curse words in the Yo Ching, but yeah. to interpret it. We can't do curse words. No. Nah. Sure. Uh, it says to be like water. And the thing about water is water always flows. Mm -hmm. And water, no matter if something is really deep, it doesn't get stuck there. Mm -hmm. It fills it up and then moves forward. And if it's really shallow and rocky, it doesn't get scared, it just pushes right through. And if it runs into a cliff, it just becomes a waterfall and throws itself off and it always keeps moving forward always keeps moving forward. It doesn't try to rise up at the wrong time because then it just gets stuck and becomes a swamp. Yeah. It's going forward to the sea. And if you're a writer and the sea is sort of like where you're gonna swim free in your story or in your life, you're gonna have a passageway that's gonna be rocky at times. It's gonna be deep at times. You're gonna get stuck at times. You're gonna have to jump off a cliff at times. And the trick is to always keep your essence. Always keep your style and your essence, but adapt to the surroundings and always move forward, and then you'll find the sea. Good advice. Hugh Gallagher, thank you for being on the thank show. You, Keith. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Enjoy. A typical day for Von Von Von. Wake up. <laughs>